Welcome to Victory Update. I'm Gene Bailey. Glad you're here today. Today is April 27th, and this is your day for a miracle. And this is a great day to be alive. This is a great day to be on the Victory Channel. We're excited. We're pumped. We're ready because God's got great things for you. With me today, Kurt Shellstrom, my co-host today. Hey, Kurt. Monday. It's a great day. It is. Why is Monday a great day? Every day is a great day. You yeah. know, it's just how you, the perspective, you know, yeah, and how you look at it. And uh, some people, oh, it's Monday. And other people go, man, it's Monday. And so it's Monday and we're going to take yeah, it. Yeah, we're having a great time. Well, okay. All right. So I got some great stuff happening today. Of course, a little bit later. We're going to have our special guest, Daniel Kalenda, is going to be here. He's got a word. I know he's got a word just for you. I don't know what it is, but I know he's got it just for you. But let me tell you what's happening this weekend. Sunday, right here on the grounds of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, we're having the drive-in church service. That's it right here. Wow. We've been waiting. This has been on Brother Copeland's heart for a while. We waited until we were... And we wanted to be in accordance with our state governments and our county and to make sure everything was fine. And so this Sunday, we're going to be here live. In fact, I want you to see what it's going to look like right now. Tim Fox is down on the tarmac where we're going to have the stage set up and all the all the cars coming in. Tim, show us. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, Gene, we are all so very excited. I'm just down the road from where you are. I can almost throw a rock and hit the building you're in. But we are down at the KCM airport. And just behind me, underneath that awning, will be where the platform is. And where I'm standing, all the way from there back to me, and all behind me is what we're believing will be full of cars, full of people coming to hear the Word of God. It's exciting. It's something, as you said, that Brother Copeland has had on his heart for a long time. And now that the governor of Texas has lifted some of the restrictions, Restrictions, we're going to be able to do it, and we are so excited. That's right. Yeah, we still have to stay within our six-foot distancing, so if you stay in your car, you're okay, okay? So we're going to have a great listen. <laughs> we're going to pull right behind Tim there, as you can see. We're going to have some flatbed trailers. We're going to have David Ellis, the guys, the band. Everybody's going to be there. We're going to have music. It's church Sunday morning right here <laughs> at EMIC. Just the place has changed a little bit. Tim, tell us. Just Why does that bit. little overhang look so familiar? What has been going on? What happened there before? Well, we've had our motorcycle rallies. If you go way back, way back, if you're a partner with the ministry, you may remember the motorcycle rallies that we had here. That's where the platform and the stage was for those rallies as well. And as you can tell, my, my hair's blowing, what little I have, and the coat's blowing. But you know what? I call that natural air conditioning when the when temperatures get a little warm we got a little natural air conditioning out here that's right and you know tim that's actually you're seeing the manifestation of the prophetic there brother copeland called out we cursed that COVID. we took authority over it and the wind to blow it out and you're you're a living example right there of the wind blowing it's been blowing our gear around before we went that's on the right. air and everything else so <laughs> all right thanks tim for coming from there now i want you to go over Drink in your car and drive over to the phone center because we want to get an update from what's happening over there. Thank you, sir. You bet. All right. So let's get things started right now with what's going on in the news. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, Gene. The coronavirus pandemic has caused the cancellation of a lot of events, but this is a first. Due to the virus, the state of New York has decided to cancel its Democrat presidential primary. It had been scheduled to take place on June 23rd. Democrats on the state board of elections made the decision a day after Bernie Sanders campaign asked that his name remain on New York's Democrat primary ballot. The state will still hold its congressional and state level primaries on the 23rd. And speaking of New York governor, Andrew Cuomo said today that his state could be ready for phase one of reopening by May 15th. This comes as we are learning about major steps in the right direction in the fight against the coronavirus. On Sunday, the governor announced New York's daily death toll had dropped to 367, less than half of the close to 800 during the pandemic's peak. The governor also said overall hospitalizations and intubations are down. More than 17,000 people have died in New York as a result of the virus. But on the other coast, a spring heat wave was drawing crowds of Californians to beaches, golf courses, and trails that led authorities to close one coastal park as they warned people not to swarm recreational areas for fear of causing a coronavirus surge. 
At Orange County's Huntington Beach, Saturday, the parking lots were closed, so visitors parked on area streets and in other nearby lots. Most recreation areas remain closed in the state with various stay-at-home orders in place. And in business news, it appears Virgin Atlantic is on the verge of falling victim to the coronavirus pandemic. The UK's Daily Mail is reporting Sir Richard Branson is looking to sell his airline before the end of May. News comes after Branson failed to secure an airline bailout from the British government. Reports indicate Branson even offered up his private island as collateral for the government help. He is now reportedly seeking backing from private investors. Despite more and more attention from conservative media about claims from a former aide that Joe Biden sexually assaulted her back in the early 90s, Joe Biden received another endorsement in his bid to become the Democrat nominee for president. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeted her support this morning for the former vice president, saying he knows how to get the job done. And she also referred to his values and integrity in numerous appearances on Sunday morning shows over the weekend. Neither Pelosi nor any of Biden's potential running mates, who are all female, were asked about the sexual assault allegations. Biden's campaign has denied the allegations. And change is coming to Saudi Arabia. King Salman on Sunday offered an end to the use of the death penalty for crimes committed by minors. The move comes after the kingdom recently stopped using flogging as a punishment for committing a crime. The controversial form of punishment is where a whip or stick is used to hit someone. It was replaced by jail time or community service. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the heir to the throne, is believed to be the force behind those changes. And the fate of North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un remains in question. He hasn't been seen in public since April 11th, and that has speculation running rampant about his health. Well, my guess is since we haven't heard anything from the North Koreans and the pressure has been building, there's been media discussion of this now for several weeks or like, what, 10 days. My guess is there's probably something wrong with him. Um, you know, whether he's dead or incapacitated or a coma. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there in the rumor mill. Robert Kelly is a political scientist at South Korea's Busan National University. South Korean officials continue to maintain they don't see any operational changes in the north and Kim is likely still in power. High schoolers undefeated by the coronavirus lockdowns are heading online for virtual proms in party dresses or come as you are colored lights flashing in their bedrooms and teachers turn DJs. High schoolers are trying to salvage one tradition. Back to you in the Victory Studio. Uh, thanks, Mike, for that update. Listen, you know, Kurt, one of the things that's so encouraging, I know just an hour ago, our very own governor, Governor yep. Abbott, started reopening Texas, reopening. You know, it's a phased in, but we're seeing that all across the country as this heat wave comes in. Yeah. I mean, we got wonderful temperatures here. I know it's hot in California. Boy, this is an exciting time. And are you excited about what God's doing right now? I am excited. And I have to share this. We called the Mexican restaurant last night to see if we could sit out on the patio. Yeah. And it was a four hour wait. People were lined up outside wow. trying to get in because people are excited to get back to work, to get outside again, and to see the people just energizing behind yeah. all of this. Right. It's a uh, Great days are ahead for America. I agree. Yeah, we're all anxious to get back. But listen, want to encourage you again, just because it's this way in Texas doesn't mean it's that way where you're at. Follow your local government and pay attention to the directives given to you by your leadership. All right. Something happened recently that you're involved in, Kurt. We had our virtual victory campaign last weekend. What did you think of, this was our second one. What did you think of how it went? Well, you know, seeing people from literally all over the globe joining us here at Eagle Mountain International Church and broadcasting around the world and have everyone being able to join us for this special service, you know, all the different states, all the different countries coming in to being a part uh, and yeah. seeing people's lives change, the testimonies that came in, the people that were healed, the people that were saved, on Saturday night, Brother Copeland gave a special altar call. 33 people called our phone center and said, hey, I accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. And so those are just great, great things happening here, but it's happening all over the world because people are able to join virtually. Yeah, amen. There was so much that happened. I want you to take a quick look in about a couple minutes, a recap of what happened this weekend at the Virtual Victory Campaign. Watch. You're joining us all around the world for this very special virtual victory campaign. These people, I don't believe they're just going to listen to us. I believe they're going to jump up off the cow and start worshiping God with us. We're connected all over the world right now. The virtual victory, victory campaign, campaign starts now. From the top of the world to the bottom, all the way around the middle, the Word of God is going forth. Righteousness saith, the righteousness of God 
just as right with God as Adam was before he sinned and just as right with God as Jesus was when he is on the earth and is today. Praise God, you won't be tempted to cast away your faith. You won't be tempted to let go of your faith. When it's all said and done, you'll be able to say like the Apostle Paul, I kept the faith. California is a red state washed in the blood of Jesus yes, Christ. thank God. We are Hallelujah. victorious. I believe God is anointing is up on this meeting to bring victory in people's lives. This nation is going to a place where it has never been before. The body of Christ is going to a place where it has never been before. And this is the time of a great, great, great awakening. what's happening to you, have faith in God. I don't care what's happening around you, have faith in God. How do you have faith in God? Go to the covenant books and find out what he said about it and believe it. Hey man, boy, that was great, wasn't it? That fires you up. Yeah, it does fire you <laughs> up. 95 countries, yeah. wow, all states. Listen, you know, there's so much that happens. There's so many great things that we had technical difficulties. If you were watching over the weekend, you saw us go, ah, we had, could, things weren't working and you were talking, you couldn't hear us, but we, the devil could not yeah. keep this quiet. Yeah. We found a way. God helped us and we got it on the air and we got things fixed. Boy, I tell you what, and I love the fact our partners didn't waver. They stayed with us. All the viewership yeah. continued to climb. Yeah. People stayed with us. Maybe they were just wanting to see what was going to happen yeah. next. <laughs> That's great. We're, we're okay with that. As long as you stayed, watched. Uh, you know, there's so many great things happening. You know, we got things coming up here in just a couple of weeks. Uh, another another campaign. What is well, it? Well, we're supposed to be in Bogota, Colombia and Lima, Peru. And so now we're going to be doing it here and we're going to have have simultaneous translation into Spanish uh, for all of our wonderful Spanish partners and friends from all over the world. And it's going to be a great time. Two weeks, May 14th through 16th. Yeah. So set your calendars. You want to be there. You want to be a part of the next virtual victory campaign. We're going to have a blast. It's going to be great. We're going to see God do the same thing. Signs, wonders, miracles, healings, all kinds of great stuff. But right now, I think it's appropriate that we go to music here with Brian Duffield, Jacob, and D. Sims on Great Things. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great Take it. 
Thank you. And I'm sorry, I said D. Sims. It's D. Mims. I, can, I think I was trying to get you confused with Phil Sims, quarterback, you know, but I don't think that's you. I'm pretty sure that's not you. So, D. Mims, thank you guys. That was great. Great things, Kurt. That's right. That's yeah. right. All right. So, Tim has now made his way back over to the PSC, the Partner Service Center, and he's at the phone center. Tim, tell us what's going on over there. Yes, Gene, I am here at the call center where every morning, every weekday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, we have morning prayer where people call in with their prayer requests. We pray for them, read them over the air, and we always, always get results. In fact, these folks are waiting for your call. If you want to call, 877-281-6297 is the number. Call in with your prayer requests. They will pray with you. If you have a testimony, we want to hear those as well. And Gene, in fact, I have a couple of testimonies I want to share before I send it back to you. We were mentioning the virtual victory campaign just a moment ago. This came in today. Uh, this is from Debbie. She was watching the virtual victory campaign Saturday night when Brother Copeland mentioned someone that was being healed in their hip from a prior accident. That was her and she was healed. And this one came in today. This one's really good as well. This ought to get you excited. Uh, this is Edward from New York, called in for prayer for a baby who was given no hope. Mother could not hold him because she has COVID, but she's now doing better and he is thriving today. The father was able to hold that child. Those are the kinds of things we're hearing, Gene, because God is on the yeah, move. He is. Boy, and that's good stuff, Tim. Thanks. And of course, like Tim said, that phone number's there, always there for your testimonies and your prayer requests. Phone ministers are standing by. All right, Kurt, let's get to our guest. We've known him, but I want you to introduce this video of what's happening. Well, you know, the partners play a huge part in what we do here at KCM, EMIC, and KCBC. And, uh, you know, just to be able to join hands with Daniel and Evangelist Bonke and just to see the gospel just literally spread throughout all of Africa, our partners have a yeah. vital part of that. And we want you to watch this quick video of what you, our partners, are doing around the world. You must admit, we are all sinners before God. Did you understand so far? Only one thing matters, whether a big sinner or whether a small sinner. Every sinner needs Jesus. We need Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. What I love about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and the relationship between Christ for All Nations and KCM is that this goes back a long way and the history books are going to record a very close uh, working relationship between these two ministries. It was 1984 when Evangelist Bonke met uh, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Evangelist Bonke was in Soweto in South Africa in his dressing room and there was a knock at the door and he opened it up and there was Kenneth and Gloria and they, they came inside and, and Kenneth said to Evangelist Bonke, he said, I wanna partner with you. You minister to the unsaved, I minister to the saved, let's work together. Kenneth Copeland said to Evangelist Bonke, um, I have a word from the Lord for you. And he prophesied over Evangelist Bonke. And he told him, he said, the day is going to come where you will see a million people saved in one service. And this is at the time where Evangelist Bonke, his meetings were in a tent that sat 30,000. This was long before 
these massive outdoor meetings. This was 35 years ago. Kenneth Copeland was the first one that saw this in the spirit and he told Evangelist Bonnke, you'll see a million people saved in one meeting. And I don't think Evangelist Bonnke realized at that point how precious that connection and that relationship would become over the last 35 years. Kenneth Copeland Ministries has faithfully, faithfully, faithfully supported Christ for all nations. Fast forward in the year 2000, in our Millennium Crusade in Lagos, Nigeria, we saw 1.6 million people in one service. And when the decision cards came back in from that night of meetings, it was over a million people that got saved. Since I've taken over for the last 12 years, I've watched the consistency. I've watched the faithfulness. And my heart has just been stirred as I've seen the heart that Kenneth Copeland Ministries, Kenneth and Gloria have, uh, not just for the church world, but for the nations and for the lost. For me personally, it's been an incredible encouragement. And I, I have found that this relationship is a match made in heaven. So I wanna say to all of the partners of KCM around the world, I wanna say thank you. We love you and we pray that the Lord would bless you richly. I just want them to know that their finances, that their donations, that their love offerings are going to the harvest. That people are being saved, delivered, healed, filled with the Holy Spirit. They're helping to send us as well to the nations. And this is what's happening when partners give to Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We are living in the opportunity of history right now. Millions of people are being saved every day. This, is, this has never happened before. And we are the generation that gets to seize it. And we have to do that for Calvary's sake. Amen. Boy, what a ministry, Kurt, that we're able to be a part of. Well, I want to introduce to you Daniel Kalinda. Daniel himself, since taking over for Reinhardt, has won over 21 million people to Christ. Daniel, live right now. Can you hear me? Are you there? I hear you, Gene. Good to hear your voice and yeah, uh, good to see you, if even only by way of video. Yeah, absolutely. Daniel, I got a few. I know, I've got a hundred questions I want to ask you again. I know you were on Revival Radio when we did that. It was great. But I want to ask so many yeah. of our partners don't really know your story, but I want you to, as quickly as you can, tell me the story about your connection with Brownsville. With Brownsville. Okay, well, I first got exposed to the Brownsville Revival when I was a teenager. I was 16 years old. Um, I was a, a preacher's kid. I am a preacher's kid, fifth generation, in fact, on my father's side. Uh, and so I was saved, and I, I knew the Lord. I loved the Lord. But in revival, I was touched by the Holy Spirit in a way that was absolutely life-changing. Um, it set the course and the trajectory for the rest of my life. I ended up spending about three years plus uh, as a part of the Brownsville revival during its sort of during the height of those revival years, uh, and it's it marked me uh, even to this day. What I do in the nations, I carry with me that flame of revival in my heart that I want to see people not just get saved but get powerfully filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, Amen. Hey, so so tell us what was the how did you get involved with Reinhardt and Christ for All Nation? What was the path that brought you in there? Well, you know that you asked about about revival, about the Brownsville revival, and the and the story with Reinhardt actually intertwines with that very nicely because I met Reinhardt Bonnke in Pensacola at the revival when I was 18 years old. But even before that, when I was a 16 year old kid at the revival, there was a uh, a service where there was a lady there by the name of Suzette Hatting. Now I don't know if you know who Suzette Hatting is, but in those years, she was the head intercessor for Evangelist Bonkey's ministry. And so she wasn't preaching, she wasn't leading the meeting, but the leaders of the revival knew that she was in the room. So they invited her to come to the front and to open the meeting in prayer. And um, as she began to pray, the power of the Holy Spirit came down upon me very strongly. And I heard the Lord speak clearly and say, you are going to work with that man that she was talking about, who was Reinhard Bonnke. Now, remember, at this time, I didn't know anything about the ministry of Reinhard Bonnke. Um, I'm not even sure I've even seen or heard any pictures of the mm -hmm. of the Crusades before, but I knew that the Lord had spoken to me so much so that I went back to my room and I wrote a letter to this guy 
Then I said, the Lord spoke to me tonight. I'm supposed to work with you. I don't know what that means. I will polish your shoes. I'll carry your bags. I will assist you in any way. I just know the Lord spoke to me today. Well, I was 16 years old. What was I really going to be able to do? But then I went online and I began to look for where am I going to send this letter? That's when I first saw the pictures of those massive crowds, like you saw in the video that just played, crowds stretching to the horizon. When I saw that, I thought, man, this is a really famous guy. I had no idea. I thought he was just a missionary working in Africa. I said, this guy probably gets a thousand letters a day. And even if I got a letter to him, he probably doesn't have time to read it. And so I kind of lost courage and I, I never mailed the letter. In fact, I put it away in an old shoebox where I kept, you know, scrappings, papers and writings. And I still have that letter to this day. Fast forward uh, several years later, I met Reiner Bonke in Pensacola. I thought that was going to be our connection, but it wasn't. He went one way. I went another. I didn't hear from him again for about six years. And then I ended up getting a job in the ministry. It's a long story. I don't have time to give you all the details, but I ended up getting a job in the ministry, working in the very lowest position that they had in the ministry. If you saw a flow chart, I would have had the position on the very bottom. And I was working in the warehouse, stocking shelves, sweeping the floors. And uh, and little by little, it, this thing evolved. Evangelist Bonke one day asked me to travel with him as an assistant. I did that for a little while. Uh, I started my own ministry. He invited me to come back. And it was it was a long, it's a long story and it has many stages, but it was amazing to see how the hand of God was on this thing, even from the time that I was a 16 year old kid. And one thing that I know for sure is that this is from the Lord. Uh, it's not something that I engineered. And the, the evidence of that is this ongoing, incredible harvest that we see all around us. Yeah, amen. And a, an incredible harvest for sure. All right. So I want you to take the next few minutes, 20 minutes or so. And Daniel, I feel so strongly that you have a word for all of our people watching, whether they're watching on Facebook or YouTube or on the channel itself. I want you to just minister the word. There's, we've seen people with a lot of panic, a lot of fear, but also a renewed interest in the things of the Lord and the things of the Spirit. And yes. maybe they're thinking, wow, I, I feel that things are different. I sense that there's a revival coming. What do I need to do? How do I take a step? I want, please take your liberty and minister to the people. I, I appreciate that. And of course, this is a very unusual time. Uh, it's unlike anything that I have seen in my lifetime so far. Uh, of course, I'm still a young man, but even speaking with older believers, they've, they've said, you know, there's ne never been anything quite like this before. And every time you turn on the news, every time you scroll through social media, every prophet, every pundit has their own idea of what's going on here. Some people blame it on the Chinese, some blame it on Donald Trump, some blame it on some nefarious entity that's trying to take over the world. Some people say that it's the judgment of God. Some people are saying that it's an attack of the devil. Some people are saying that this isn't going to last very much longer. Some people are saying that we're just getting started. Some people say it's about to end and other people say it's the end of the world. And you might be saying, what am I supposed to think about all this? How am I supposed to make sense out of all of these different voices saying so many different things. Well, I'm not a prophet or the son of a prophet, so I didn't come here today to tell you that I know what's going to happen next, and I, I don't necessarily know how this will end. Um, somebody said to me, do you believe that we are living in the last days? And I said, well, absolutely I do. In fact, uh, 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John said, little children, this is the last hour. Well, again, that was 2,000 years ago. If that was the last hour, then today we are living in the last second of the last minute of the last hour. And so I absolutely do believe that these are the last days. And actually, I believe that one of the great things that's happening in this moment is that the church is being awakened to this um, reality that, that Jesus is coming back, that the end is near. I think for, for so long, life has been so good and so predictable and so ordinary that for a lot of people, they've forgotten the fact that this world is not their home. They've forgotten the fact that Jesus is coming back. And I believe that that perhaps one of the reasons that God has allowed this to happen is that he wants to see that return come to the bride that cries, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus, that we would lift up our eyes, that we would remember that uh, that this world is not our home. But here's the thing, even if the return of Christ isn't going to happen for another thousand years. Because remember, you know, my parents said that Jesus was going to come in their lifetime. And my grandparents said that, and their grandparents said that. And even the disciples thought that Jesus would return in their lifetime. So 
You know, who knows how long this is going to go on. But even if Jesus doesn't come back for another thousand years, I still say that it's the last days. Do you know why? Because it's your last days. Because it's my last days. Even if Jesus doesn't return for a hundred years, that doesn't mean you have a hundred years. The Bible says that the life of man is like a breath. It's like a shadow that fades and passes away. And so that's why it's so important that we hear what is what God is trying to say to us in this hour. And here's what I've had on my heart. I want to read this text from you, for you from John chapter 9, verse 4. This is the word that I have felt the Lord has spoken to me in this season. And people everywhere I go, they're asking me, what is the Lord saying to you? Well, this is what I feel the Lord is saying. And it comes from John chapter 9, verse 4. And, and John here is quoting Jesus. Jesus says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, for the night is coming when no man can work. Let me read that for you again. That's such an important verse. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, for the night is coming when no man can work. And if you read this passage in context, you'll see that it's, it's interesting the way that it comes about because Jesus is right in the middle of a miracle and the people around him are talking to him, asking him what he's doing. And it's as if he stops in the middle of the miracle and says this almost to himself, just like he's thinking out loud. And he says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night is coming when no man can work. And this is the, the word that I have in my heart. The night is coming. Let me say it again. The night is coming. And let me say it one more time. The night is coming. My brothers, my sisters that are watching this, that are listening to this, I, I'm, I feel almost like Noah standing outside of the ark, preaching to people that are passing by and warning them about the judgment that is about to come. And it seems like so many people for so long have been just ignoring those calls, especially from the evangelists, from the prophets talking about what the Lord is saying. For so long, people have been ignoring it and they couldn't have cared less about what the prophets have to say. But I feel like in this season, the people are suddenly willing to hear. They're suddenly stopping to listen. It's all, you just to stay with that Noah analogy, it's almost like they felt a raindrop and they know something's going on right now. And I'll say it again, as a man of God, what I sense in my heart, the night is coming. Now, I don't know if you have a, a life verse or, um, you know, you know, life verses is, is a, a passage of scripture that sort of epitomizes or it, 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 uh, incar- it compartmentalizes your, uh, your life or maybe even just a season of your life. And I've had several of these, uh, life verses at different seasons of my life. I remember an old Baptist pastor, he was telling a funny story. He said that there was a, a, a beautiful young lady in his church and, uh, she was sort of the most eligible bachelorette. And uh, all the all the single men in the church were trying to get her phone number, but she didn't want to have anything to do with them. And so this Baptist pastor approached her one day and said, sweetheart, why won't you go out with any of these guys? She said, well, pastor, my life verse is Romans 1 13. It says, I would not have you ignorant brethren. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, as, as time went on, uh, she she was getting a little bit older, you know, and she was no longer the most eligible bachelorette anymore. And not so many guys were asking for her phone number any longer. And so the, the pastor, several years later now, he approaches her again. He said, is, is that Romans 113 still your life verse? She said, oh no, my life verse is now Luke 923, which says, if any man desires to come after me, let him. <laughs> yeah. And so these life verses can change for us from time to time. I would suggest that if you don't already have a life verse, then this one I've read for you today from the book of John chapter nine, verse four is a good one for you. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day Yes. for the night is coming when no man can work. Now this verse actually struck Amen. me already a long time ago. It's been months for me that this has been stirring in my heart, even before the coronavirus, the COVID-19 thing was, was sort of on the radar. And now you hear a lot of people saying this, but I felt this in my heart when everything was going well. In fact, it was it, it stood out to me in, it, so sharply that I actually pulled up Photoshop on my computer. Now I'm not a I'm not a graphic artist, but I know how to use some of this uh, simple software now that's available. And so I made this graphic, and the graphic was if you can just picture this in your mind, 
It was the picture of a wheat field. Now imagine a field of wheat with golden heads of grain that stretch to the horizon in every direction. But in the picture, you could see that off to the left-hand side, something was coming in. Dark, ominous storm clouds were rolling in. And you could already see the golden heads of wheat beginning to bow down. I don't know if you've ever seen that when the inclement weather comes in, the way that those heads of grain, they begin to bow. And it was clear that the season was about to change. The atmosphere was already changing. And I wrote in the top of that little graphic, and I've made it the screensaver on my computer, the night is coming when no man can work. And I just want to take a moment and talk to um, two groups of, of people right now, because I, I really feel that this is, uh, this is something that applies both to those of us that are right with God, those of us that are born again, we're living for Jesus, and it also applies to those of you that are watching that may be away from the Lord. So first, let me talk to those of you that are saved. I feel that what's happening right now, again, when I say the night is coming, that is not to mean that I believe that this situation is the end of the world. That is not even to say that I believe this is the beginning of the end or the beginning of the apocalypse or anything like that. In fact, to be honest, I believe quite the opposite. I, I actually think that in a few weeks, you're going to be uh, going back to normal. You know, We're going to be gathering again in restaurants and shopping malls and churches are going to be filled up again. And a few weeks after that, a lot more restrictions will be dropped. And pretty soon, we will get back to life as usual. But actually, that is kind of what concerns me, because I almost feel as though the Lord has given us this uh, window. Now, I'm not saying he caused coronavirus, but how many of you know that God uses all things, he causes all things to work together for the good of those that love him and yeah. those that are called according to his purpose. And God has a way of using even the most tragic situations and even the most difficult situations to bring about his glory, and his purposes. Right. And so one That's of the right. things I believe that he's doing in, the, in this season is that he's given us this, almost this warning bell. It's like this little sample, this little taste, this little um, inkling of what it will be like when the night comes. And I just, it's almost like I could see Gabriel on the balcony of heaven with that trumpet in his hand. And he's just, he was just warming up and he accidentally blew a little bit into the trumpet, just a little honk, and we have this big coronavirus. But I want you to know something, my friends. As terrible as this is, and, and I know that it's been incredibly inconvenient for, for a lot of people, it's been very difficult financially for many people, and, and in terms of people's health, I know people have even died, so I'm not downplaying the significance of this situation at all. But I want you to know something, that in the grand scheme of things, it's going to get a lot worse in the end, if you read what the Bible says about the end times, it says that the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And the Bible talks about all these things. I'll tell you, when the night really comes, it's going to make what's happening now look like a picnic. And I want to ask you a question. When the night really comes, as Jesus said, the night is coming when no man can work. Will you be ready when it comes? Let, let me ask you the question this way. If, if the night came right now, let's say that it was the end. Let's say you stood before the throne of God right now. Would you be satisfied with the way that you lived your life? Would you be confident in the way that you trusted God, in the way that you preached the gospel, in the way that you obeyed him, in the way that you gave your life to his kingdom and his purposes? Or would you live or would you stand there with regret over opportunities that were missed? and things that you knew you should have done that you didn't do. My friend, if that's the case, if you would have regret on that day, I might suggest that you allow this little foretaste of what it's like when the night comes to shake you out of complacency. You know, uh, Gene, you asked me earlier what revival is like, and revival is a term that's come to be associated with wonderful church meetings where people feel goosebumps and fall down and right. healings happen and great sermons are preached. But you know, that's to right. be revived means to be shaken out oh, of man. a slumber. Yes. out of a state a state of complacency. And I'll tell you what, everybody wants good church services, but nobody wants to be awakened from their comfortable nap. And mm -hmm. I believe that what's happening mm -hmm. right now just might be revival, or, or it might be the beginning of a revival that's a real revival that actually shakes the church out of complacency, out, actually causes us to understand the, the significance and the importance of the moment 
in history that we're living in. Look, we just saw that video play a few minutes ago. It was a video of a, of hundreds of thousands, millions of people that were being saved in the nations. We are living right now in the season of harvest. The greatest season of harvest in the history of the world is upon us right now. My friend, are we living with an awareness that the night is coming? I remember just a few weeks ago, I mean, three, four weeks ago, whatever it was before this coronavirus thing took off, I was flying around from country to country, continent to continent on the road, three weeks out of the month, preaching three, four, five times in a day, completely exhausted. I remember complaining to my wife about how busy I was and how, how much travel I was doing and saying I need to slow down a little bit. And then look, look at now. I couldn't get on an airplane and fly to Africa right now if I wanted to. And even if I could get there, there would be no crowds gathered because they're not allowed to, to gather right now. You, you saw that video with those fields full of people there to hear the gospel. Right now, those fields are empty. And my friend, there is coming a day when those fields will be empty forever. There is coming a day when the door is going to be shut forever. And I just feel an urgency in my heart that the Lord is, is allowing us to experience just a little bit of what it's like when the night comes. And, 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 and I pray that we would learn from this lesson. And I pray that we would use the rest of the time, that we would work the works of him that sent us while it is day, for the night is coming when no man can work. Now, let me let me talk very quickly. I, I know my time is short, but I want to talk also to those that may not be right with God, because I, I know that most of the people watching this are probably going to be Christians, but I know also that the Holy Spirit is the one who draws people to Jesus. And I know that some of you may have just been scrolling through or flipping through the channels and you've come upon this. I want to just say to you right now, stop scrolling and listen, my, my friend, my brother, my sister, listen. I have something that I want to say to you because the message that I've been talking about, the night is coming, it applies to you in probably a more immediate way as well. You know, there's this parable, and I, I alluded to this earlier, um, where Jesus is talking about the days of of Noah. He's, he's referring to the way that it was. And this is what he says in, in Matthew 24, 36. He says, for, uh, for in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up until the day that Noah entered the ark. Let me say that again. For the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage up until the day that Noah entered the ark. I want you to just imagine this, Noah standing out there, this preacher of righteousness, the Bible says, and for, for decades, he is proclaiming the, that, that the judgment of God is coming. And for decades, the people have written him off as a crazy old loon bag. And then the Bible says, Jesus, this is not just the Bible, it's Jesus himself speaking, okay? And he says, for up until the day that they entered into the ark, the people were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. In other words, Life was just continuing on as usual. No one was disturbed. No one was alarmed. No one was perplexed. I bet those people in the days before the flood would have been very grateful if God had allowed a little rainstorm, a little rain shower to come the day before the flood, something that would have shaken them, something that would have disturbed them, something that would have caused them to run to the ark and climb inside. But they did not have any such mercy in their day. But my brothers and sisters, what if... What's happening in this moment is just a tremor. And what if it's God's mercy allowing us to get just a little taste of what it's like when the night comes? Listen, my friend, a few weeks ago, life was going on as usual. You were going to work every day. You were shopping. You were going to the movie theater. You were going maybe for the unsaved. Maybe you're going to the nightclubs. You're just doing whatever, just living your life. And look at what's happened. It seemed as though the, this world was going to continue on the way that it had been forever. It seemed like it would never change. It seemed like everything was predictable and reliable and normal. You were relying on the economy. You were relying on the government. You were relying on the medical community. You were relying on the scientific community. And look what happened in the blink of an eye. The entire world has been brought down to its knees. Think about that. Think about how tenuous this world systems, this world system is the governments of the world, the economies of the world, the structures of the world, the things that you've been building on. I want to ask you something in this moment. Now that you see what it's like when a shaking happens, have you discovered that you have been building on solid rock 
Or have you discovered that you've been building on shifting sand? That's the question that you need to answer right now, my friend, because the Bible says that one day everything that is that can be shaken is going to be shaken. And I would suggest that if you've been building your life for things that don't matter, if you've been building your life on things that are temporal and temporary and carnal and fleshly, I would suggest that you change your strategy because one day the night is really going to come and there's not going to be another chance. The door is going to close. The rain is going to fall and it's going to be too late. But this is what Jesus said. He said, I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved. Jesus is the door. And I just want to invite you, if you're watching this and you say, I want to hear, listen to what what, what the, the writer of Hebrews says, quoting the Old Testament. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. I believe that God is speaking. Again, I'm not saying that God sent the pandemic, but I'm saying that in the midst of these things, the voice of God can be heard. And I believe that God is speaking to you. And today, my friend, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart, I beg of you. And if you say, Daniel, I want to change. I want to come out of this situation, a totally new person. I have good news for you. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And if you want to make that change today, I want to pray with you. Is it okay if I just pray for the viewer? For absolutely, the absolutely. And we have the phone number there if so, they need it. Yes, so please use that phone number as well. But let me just pray for you. And I'm asking you, where you're watching, just stretch your hand out towards that screen. Even if it's on a little phone or something like that, just do something as an act of faith. Maybe you need to get down on your knees and just pray with me right now and say, dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to save me now. Make me a new creation. Make me a child of God. I surrender my life to you. As of this day, be my Savior, be my Lord, and be my very best friend. I belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to me. I believe it, I receive it, and I confess it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And my friend, listen, I believe that when the night comes, you are going to be safe because you're going to be inside the ark on that day. And I'm so thankful for you, and I'm thankful that the Lord made it possible for you to watch this broadcast. God bless you. Thank you so much, Daniel. Boy, and I just, listen, I want to put out, you see the phone number there, but if you if you prayed that prayer with Daniel and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, you need to tell somebody and there's how to get on your path, yes. what to do next. It's right there on the screen, kcm.org slash salvation. You can call the phone number or call or go to that website and you can see and get in plugged in. Listen, there's so many things happen. I want to put a picture up, Daniel. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is a picture from the stores when the pandemic struck, what happened to the Bible aisle. I don't know if you can see it, but the Bible aisle is just about cleared out. This is the greatest wow. time in history in my lifetime where we can see, Kurt, people have an opportunity. I'm talking about Christians have an opportunity. You know, I'm always talking about being the one, yeah. you know, and Ezekiel 3 came to me last year. I mean, God showed me that last summer. The, the, the task as a watchman, we are committed. We have to do our job as believers and spread this gospel because he, I love that, Daniel, the night is coming and this may, the worst thing you can do is let this just go and go, oh, we're back to work in, you know, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. That is not what it is. But Daniel, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you, you may not be able to travel to uh, Africa right now, but they're watching you. Let me tell you who's watching. Mm -hmm. Canada, Australia, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, Colombia, the U.S. Virgin Islands, the United Arab Emirates, Sweden, Nigeria, Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, the Bahamas, and so many more. Wow. Daniel, Amazing. I want, you, I want you to talk to all of the believers watching right now and give them your charge for what they should be doing right now during this time where they're at home and they're getting this reset. Go ahead and take it. Yeah. Well, you know, an interesting passage in the book of Hosea, chapter 2, verse 14, Jesus, that God is speaking to the nation of Israel. And of course, Israel's been chasing after all kinds of foreign gods, and, and she's basically backslidden. And now the nation is going to be judged for that. And it's a difficult time in, in, the, in the history of the nation. 
But it's amazing what the Lord says. And I, I want you to hear this. It's so important. He says, I will allure her and I will draw her in the wilderness where I can speak tent comfortably to her. Let me read that again. I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably to her. What's happening here? I, I, I have this mental picture of God seeing all the chaos and all the sin and all the confusion, all the distraction, all the bells and whistles, all of the attractions calling out from every corner to his people. And he allows this, this season to come upon them. It's a difficult, hard season, but it's a season where he has drawn them out into the wilderness. And what is he saying? He's saying, I'm going to bring you out away from all the distractions. I'm going to bring you out away from all the chaos. I'm going to bring you away from all the noise where I don't have to yell over the top of all these other competing voices. I will speak comfortably to you. And in this moment, we, we have, again, a great opportunity right now because there's so many things you can't do. In fact, for a lot of you, you can't even go to church. So you have a choice in this moment. You can choose to just fill the void with all kinds of silliness. You can just watch TV and turn on Netflix and scroll through Facebook endlessly. And you can try to, to just fill the void with entertainment. Or you can stop. You can be quiet. You can let the Lord speak comfortably to you. And I tell you, if you take the second route, you will come out of the season stronger and better than ever before. Amen. You know, I just saw on here, Facebook, that Pakistan is watching. So many other countries are yes. tuning in and to be a part of this great harvest. Listen, if you want to know more about Daniel Kalinda and Christ for All Nations, you can just go to their website, cfan.org. Is that correct? There it is right yes, there on the screen, cfan.org. And get it. we want to encourage you to be a part. This ministry, if you're a partner with KCM, guess what? You are partnering with Daniel. But maybe you want to do more. Go to their website, get involved, see what Daniel's doing and the whole team there. It's good ground, Kurt. Absolutely. It? Absolutely. Yeah. Great ground. They're doing some great things. And, you know, that's what KCM is all about is helping and staying alongside other ministries. And those of you partners that are watching right now, uh, go to their website, see what they're doing and help support Daniel and his amazing team there in Orlando and what they're doing around the world. Yes. Amen. All right. I'm going to go to the music here right now while you're calling. And then I'm going to check in with Tim one more time. This is your sea of victory. Go ahead, Brian. the bed. 
enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Just listen to that today. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. message by Daniel and you know so many of you that have watched on Facebook on YouTube on the Victory Channel uh, share this with your friends share this with your loved ones that need to hear this message it stirred me up and Daniel thank you so much for being with us today yeah thank you so much Daniel and I know you want to see more about it listen we're so glad you've been a part of today's I want to echo what Kurt said please share this tell somebody about the Victory Channel tell somebody about us on YouTube and Instagram all the places that were there and keep calling if you need someone to agree with you in prayer, the phone number's right there. Real quick, Tim, in 10 seconds, tell me what's going on down there at the phones. Well, Gene, people are being healed, people are being delivered. We've had people call in praying for salvation for their family. I believe the message we just heard was very powerful yes. and, a, and a time for people to get born again. I agree with that, Tim. So remember, we'll see you next time. <laughs>